Yo. Ha ha. Uh, Bill uh, Nicholson. What is good, YouTube? Your boy, Mel Nemesis, coming back with another quick review. And today we have Tom Sachs' General Purpose Shoe. First Nike Craft Shoe. First Tom Sachs Shoe on the Mel Nemesis channel. And it is an honor to actually have this because I wanted to talk something real close about this uh, shoe in terms of its purpose. You know, what was the purpose of this shoe release? Uh, I can tell you straight from the gate that it was not for clout. <laughs> and it definitely wasn't like a, a fashion statement. Though I know there are people out there that can make that type of shoe or this type of shoe a fashion statement. <laughs> We get a little bit of uh, detail of what the intent was for the shoe, but with that said, dumb man, let's get straight into it because this came from the Tom Sachs website, and I'm gonna say that to say this: when Tom Sachs did the Mars 1.0 Nike Craft, this shoe, <clears throat> they made them in limited quantity, so it's not like you were able to get it. Um, it wasn't really accessible to the public. And because of that, that's what drove up the prices. You can clearly see it right here. Um, and then the idea with this release, what Tom Sack wanted to do is make it accessible to the public. So not only did this release in different boutique shops, um, and actually this is the re-release, if I'm not mistaken, because this released the first time in June, but it released on his website via a raffle or a draw, but it also dropped at Kohl's select coals around the nation, which I thought was dope. Uh, and they really did want this to be a shoe that was accessible for everyone, um, as well as the cost concerns. Cause you know, nowadays shoes, you look at them, they're like 200, $300. Um, and originally he wanted to release this general purpose shoe for about around a hundred dollars, but with the materials that are used, and I'll cover that during this video, they kind of had to up it up. And when I say they, maybe Nike's marketing team, Marked it up to about 130. I think that's what I paid uh, for this shoe. So, with that said, up man, you see the Nike craft right here. Of course, the great architect Tom Sack. You can see on the bottom. I like his message on here that says, "Own less, do more." So let me touch up on this statement because Tom Sack came from a middle class family, and if you Talked to Tom Sack when he was a kid and you basically showed him the shoes that you guys have in your collections. He would tell you, no, I only really had three pairs of shoes, right? And he wore his shoes till he couldn't wear it anymore in terms of size. That's when he would get another pair of shoes. So he wasn't used to the, the world we live to today where everybody in their mom's got like 30 pairs of shoes, at least the kids. Uh, and some of the dogs got 20, 30, 40, 50 pairs of shoes. Um, but you can tell that by his background, he had that blue collar, at least came from that family with a blue collar uh, type of style of, of working mindset. You know, so he appreciated everything that he had, which is basically the way I feel every day, you know. So with that said and done, you can see right here, Nike Craft, more Nike Craft logo on here. Um, he, <laughs> Tom Sack expects perfection. So... Understand when you're seeing the general purpose shoe or any shoe that comes from Nike Craft uh, by design, it is crazy. And I mean crazy, heavily tested, um, heavily designed. And the reason being is because you want the longevity for your shoes. Remember, he came from a family where Tom Sack came from a family where they appreciated everything they had, but they wore their shoes into the ground before they got another pair. So that's said and done. You can see on the lid. And I'm going to read this off real quick. You'll probably see a screenshot right here, but it says Nike craft shoes are manufactured to the exact specifications of champion athletes throughout the world. The design and construction of Nike craft products support all the activities of your life and tell your story. Nike craft shuns innovation for its own sake, but embraces it as a necessity. Top quality products fulfill their intended purpose while remaining as hard wearing as possible. Before recycling, there is reuse. And before reuse, there is durability. And I can tell you right now, when we take out this shoe, which I'm about to do right now, the construction, the materials made for the price point of $130 is really good. And I'm going to compare it to another shoe that maybe a lot of people might recognize or may not recognize. So 
Yes. Let's just get straight into it. Got that out the way. Kicking my boxes all over the place. I'm going to take out the first shoe. Let's take out the second. And let's get straight into it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> as we're looking at this, this is the general purpose shoe. And I can tell right now, Tom Sachs, you can tell when something's been created and it's been created very, very carefully and it took long periods to create. And I'll tell you why. The three cup molded shoe with this like gubble, I want to say this gubble, this gum midsole that you see right here is hardened. Now, I can tell you from the back and looking at and feeling this that this is not really made to be worn in icy conditions, right? Um, it does have a rubber size outsole, like a waffle style. Uh, you can see that it has the Nike Craft logo towards the bottom, as well as the original Nike US patent that I, I'm not sure if anybody really knew about that. But if I were to look at this shoe for the first time and seeing this and feeling it, definitely not for the snow, not for the ice either, because I can definitely see you slipping. And I'll probably have a video right here to show you and illustrate exactly what I'm talking about. But if you're doing like things like hiking, um, you're going outside to, to cut the grass, things like that, you're going to build memories within this shoe. And its intent and purposes is whatever you do in life, don't let the shoe make you as a person. You know, I try to push that message on my channel where when you live life, <clears throat> it's not you versus the world, right? It's you versus you. How can you be a better version of yourself? Um, I've been kind of gauging that, that message to my head so that when I live life, I'm not living it as if it's me trying to compare myself to other people and what they're doing. You know, if anything, I, I just want to live my life, but also, again, live the best version of my life, me versus me, if that makes sense. So, and looking at the shoe, let's look at the materials. As I said, bottom outsole is rubber and it has that waffle-like design. Um, the upper has more of a, like a knit construction and you can see some TPU paneling right here. Of course, TPU along that Nike swoosh, both on the outside and the inside of the shoe. Um, I want to say that this is definitely suede uh, around the mudguard, uh, suede around the hill counter with the Nike um, logo towards the back or towards the hill. Uh, but around the eye stays also, you can see suede along here. The one thing I will say and you're going to see a video of this, or at least a picture. When you look at the shoe by design, and you look at that microfiber collar, this portion right here is very, very soft. This shoe will also conform to your heel. So you see by design, you can see that the, the heel tabs that they put towards the tongue, towards the heel, these blue ones that I'm speaking of, you notice that when you're looking at it, this heel tab goes within that Nike tab, right? Uh, and it's holding up the two back laces. When you tighten those laces, you see the knit that's on the upper, it's going to tighten up. So it's going to mold towards your heel. So the, the more you tighten this portion up, and actually I can do like a, a kind of example, but the more you tighten up, you're going to notice that towards the heel, you're going to have added support. And of course, they do have padding towards the outs, actually towards the inside, uh, where you're going to feel your ankle just press up into the shoe. The one thing I will say <clears throat> is that I wish that I went a half size lower than my normal size. So basically true to size because this actually is a wide foot. And my guess is based off the upper, since it's so thin, there's so much room for your foot to slide in and have that comfort. But again, this is my first Tom Sack shoe, so I didn't really know that. So I know I had a little bit of wiggle room in the front, but it was wide enough. So I just want to let everybody know that, look, before you look at the shoe, stay true to size. That would be my recommendation. Um, another thing is that <clears throat> by, by design, let me take these out. By design, when you're looking at the shoe itself, you notice that there's going to be some type of curvature to it, towards it. Uh, when you take out the insole, you're not going to be able to see that curvature until you take this out. So the insole does look like this. And of course, it has that Nike Craft logo on the exterior. Um, but a little bit of EVA foam that's in the sole of the shoe. 
right? So if I start pressing towards the middle, <laughs> likely going to have a video on that too. Uh, if I start pressing towards the middle, you'll see that it has EVA foam. Now, I'm looking at this, and this kind of reminds me a little bit of, I think, a Yeezys, right? Because Yeezys, they typically use EVA foam, and it has a nip upper. Um, the only difference is that this has that hardened, right, that molded cupsole. So you're looking at the rubber that's attaching from the midsole to the upper and keeping that together. But the part that kind of surprised me about this shoe is the mud guard towards like the, the toe area, right? I did not expect this to be so hard. It's not like <laughs> <sighs> all those dirty minds. But anyway, I did not expect this to be tough, like almost like a like a steel toe, like a Timberland boot, right? And and that's good for, for impact because if you're going to use this every day, we typically take our, depending on what you do, you can smash your toe. Um, and this will actually help as like a buffer, like a bumper towards any impact. It is very hard. It's not it's not steel toe, but it looks like it's like a hardened texture. Let's say like a plastic or a mold that they put over top with the suede to keep that sturdy durability. Right. Um, I can say from construction wise that these materials will last you a long time. It did take them quite a few years to construct the shoe as you're seeing it right now um this is a shoe that the more you wear it the more you stain it the better it gets so my intention for this is to wear this next year towards the spring summertime because i do a lot of outside work I actually just got done doing some cement work in, in my garage uh where i probably would have wore this if it came in time but again this is for everyday use to a certain point if that makes sense it's not it, i wouldn't wear this to shovel your snow but I would wear this if I'm outside doing, you know, even if I'm walking the dog, things like that. You want to create memories with this shoe versus, you know, kind of like stunting out for the latest and greatest shoes just to make it a fashion statement, like stuff like this, right? So your boy, Bill Nemison, man, comment below. Let me know what you think of the general purpose shoe. Uh, again, I'll be doing some videos hopefully next year to kind of illustrate how I'm utilizing the shoe and how it's being worn over time in terms of the, the, the damages and the stains. Yes, that's that's what we want out of this shoe. And before we do the on feet for this, I wanna say this personally, that I told you that this wasn't really like a, a fashion statement. It was more so the message that he wanted to push in terms of Tom Sack was, you do want to be a creative person. Everybody is a creative person. Um, creativity exists in everybody in every single different way, but you won't know until you try, right? And, you know, again, don't let the shoe be, don't let people know who you are for the shoe. You know, people want to know you for you as an individual. Um, I do the shoe stuff. I do the electronic stuff on the YouTube channel every day, but it's, it's more of an educational purpose. Um, of course, I like shoes, but I want people to know me for me the same way I am on the camera is the same way you'll see me off the camera. Uh, and I appreciate everything and everybody that's been participating on the Milton Nipperson channel in terms of comments, suggestions and things like that uh, to help me grow as an individual. Because, again, as I said before, it's always me versus me. It's never me against the world. Um, and I never see myself as challenging anybody's intelligence or um, judging and liking and stuff like that. That, that, look, me, Milton Nipperson as an individual down to earth, um, just trying to do things every day to help others, help myself, things of that nature. Um, but again, you don't want people to know you for a shoe, right? No, people should know you for your achievements, things you did in your life, how you make an impact to others. Um, and that's what attracts a lot of people towards you as an individual. But your boy, Milton Vincent Mad, the Tom Sachs General Purpose Shoe. I did have to sign off with the shoe during delivery. And for anybody that is a winner of the Travis Scott Black Phantoms, if you got that on his website, that is the same process, meaning you have to be physically at your house in order to get this shoe or they will not deliver. I just want to let everybody get a heads up for anybody getting that shoe. But your boy, Mother Mr. Man, let's do that on feet. Tom Sachs, general purpose shoe. I can't wait to dog this down next year. Looking forward to it. I am out, and you guys, stay blessed. <music>